Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today and hope you're all having a great time. Today we're going to start with a Starship update followed by an update related to the billionaire Jared Isaacman. According to the latest reports, SpaceX is on track to construct Starship's first Florida launch pad. They're making slow progress and the process includes plans for the off-site assembly of a second skyscraper-sized launch tower. SpaceX began work on the Starship launch pad at NASA's Kennedy Space Center KSC, LC-39A in late 2019, so this isn't the first time they've done it. The business had already leased this space for the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches. By the end of the year, several of the Starship launch mount frameworks were visible, and some of the massive water-cooled thrust diverters arrived in early 2020. However, construction began almost immediately once SpaceX transferred the entire Starship program to South Texas, development on the platform stopped and became unstable. It was only two years later that the activity finally returned. Musk announced a reboot on December 3, 2021, and within a few weeks the wreckage of the old Starship launch pad, now obsolete, was scrapped and removed, leaving the site more or less unexplained. With the exception of occasional remote aerial photography, it was nearly impossible to document progress since then, but the SpaceX webcast view of the Falcon 9 launch from Pad 39A focuses primarily on the company's foundation preparation. However, in early February 2022, a flyover at another SpaceX KSC facility showed the first clear sign of preparation for the Pad hardware assembly. SpaceX's new Roberts Road Falcon Storage, Refurbishment and Processing Center has recently built small sets of square foundation is a little confusing, but looks similar to the contractor's construction of the first Starship launch tower in South Texas. Each completed section, approximately 12 meters or 40 feet long and 18 meters or 60 feet high, was transported several miles by road and stacked up by cranes. Roberts Road is about 7 miles from Pad 39A, with a single paved, well-maintained and optimized. In other words, it's clear that SpaceX will build a Starship launch tower from Pad 39A at the Roberts Road facility and transport the section to Pad for assembly. To avoid regular interruptions in Falcon's launch, SpaceX could do the same with virtually any portable Pad hardware, including tower arms and launch mounts. Indeed, SpaceX has only developed approximately a third of the Roberts Road site at least. A local water agency recently disclosed development plans, indicating that SpaceX planned to build two massive warehouse-like buildings to fill up the rest of the property. They would have more covered floor space than the whole Starbase plant in South Texas, where all Starships are now constructed, based on their footprints. CEO Elon Musk announced that SpaceX will produce and launch Starships from Florida during a February 10, 2022 update event, all but confirming that the new site will be a new Starship factory. Satellite imagery shows that SpaceX has started leveling the unfinished stretch of Roberts Road in the last week, opening the path for Foundation construction to begin soon. Will SpaceX truly replicate Starbase, the Kennedy Space Center's Boca Chica? Or will the new Starship factory be a major update with numerous enhancements, similar to how the firm upgrades its rockets, remains a mystery. In any case, Starbase East and the first of numerous spacecraft launch towers on the East Coast will be up and running in no time. In our following update, three more all-civilian SpaceX missions to space were announced by Inspiration4 Commander Jared Isaacman. On February 14th, billionaire Jared Isaacman, the CEO of payments processing company Shift4, who had earlier purchased a SpaceX flight for the Inspiration4 mission, declared that he will conduct three more all-civilian missions, like Inspiration4, 
with SpaceX. As per reports, the first mission, named Polaris, is scheduled for 2022 and will set Isaacman and SpaceX on track to go to much higher orbit with the Dragon spacecraft. Isaacman cited the example of the Gemini mission to show how high this mission will travel. Though Isaacman had refused to share the exact altitude for the Polaris mission, yet we get an idea from the earlier Gemini mission that it reached an altitude of 850 miles. Polaris is expected to travel out to the Van Allen radiation belt. Isaacman noted that the mission will also include spacewalk events, which will be the first of its kind from any SpaceX Dragon capsule. He said, we're going to go farther into space than humans have gone since we last walked on the moon. Jared Isaacman had come to the limelight when he purchased SpaceX's first private all-civilian flight. He recently said that out of the three recently announced missions, the first two would be Dragon missions and the last one is a Starship mission. These first two Dragon missions will work as a beacon for SpaceX's crewed Starship missions in the future. It's not sure how much these missions will cost Isaacman. The probable date for Jarek Isaacman's Starship flight isn't clearly stated. Musk said that though he's hopeful, the spaceship, which has so far conducted only brief, suborbital hop tests, will make its first orbital flight test in 2022, but not with a crew. We may see crewed versions in years to come. Till now, Isaacman didn't state the exact amount he paid for the Inspiration4 mission, but sources state he has paid less than $200 million. In the same way, the cost of these new Dragon missions is not revealed. Isaacman said, We know space is expensive. Costs will come down just as they have for any other groundbreaking technology. This is a contribution from both SpaceX and myself towards the important goals we want to achieve with the Polaris program. Regarding the Polaris mission, Isaacman further stated, On Polaris Dawn, we endeavor to achieve the highest Earth orbit ever flown, in addition to conducting the world's first commercial spacewalk and testing of Starlink laser-based communication. The Inspiration4 mission was set as a fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Hospital. It's expected that the Polaris mission will also do the same work. As per sources, Inspiration4 had raised a total of $243 million fund for the organization. According to some reports, in the earliest Polaris mission, Isaacman will be joined by veteran Air Force fighter pilot Scott Poteet and two SpaceX operations engineers, Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon. Poteet is a previous vice president at Shift 4, and he had also spent 20 years in the Air Force. For the Polaris mission, Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon will attend as an onboard medical officer in Dragon spacecraft. Apart from the spacewalk, they'll also test laser-based communication in space using SpaceX's Starlink satellite network and will conduct medical research such as studying decompression sickness, the impacts of space radiation, and the effects of space flight on eye health. For the spacewalk that the Polaris crew is planning to conduct, they will use SpaceX-designed Extravehicular Activity EVA, spacesuits, upgraded from the current Intravehicular IVA suit. At present, the black and white intravehicular suits are used by NASA astronauts and also by civilian crews aboard Dragon spacecraft during launch and re-entry. But they're not suitable for spacewalk outside the spacecraft, thus the extravehicular activity suits will be used. Sarah Gillis said, For this mission, the suit that we're going to be designing will be a single suit so that we would launch in and then similarly use for the EVA. Anna Menon said, We'll certainly be doing so safely. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.